from Hollywood, the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Yesterday, there was a big football game between UCLA and UCLA. I mean, USC. <laughs> Bill and Frankie had two tickets for the game, but they never got to see it. Let's go back to yesterday and find out why. Oh, I can't wait to see that game today. Aren't you excited, Curly? Sure, I'm excited. Naturally, it's going to be a honey. Takes me back to the days when I used to play for my college. What college did you go to, Daddy? Uh... Takes me back to the days when I used to play for my high school. What high school did you go to, Daddy? Takes me back to the days when I was the best fullback Carlton Myers kindergarten ever had. <laughs> uh, I was known in those days as Twinkle Toes Harris. <laughs> the way I used to tight rope down the sidelines, ah, it was a pretty thing to behold. Ain't that right, Remley? You say so. <laughs> For a substitute water boy, you weren't bad. <laughs> now, but kids, if you want to see class, you should have seen me. Rump along Remley, they call me. <laughs> did you and Daddy play together? We sure did. Let me tell you about it, kids. You see, we... Hey, wait a minute. Now, let me tell them. They're my kids. But, Curly, this week it's my turn to do the line. <laughs> it is not. You had your turn last week when you told them about the time you hit the three home runs in the World Series. I know, but how about the week before when you swam the English Channel? <laughs> no hands. We don't care who tells us, but one of you start talking, and this time, make it good. Yeah. Last week it was so corny, we had a tough time keeping a straight face. Don't worry, this is going to be a good one. <laughs> this happened in the Rose Bowl. <laughs> The opposing team kicked off. Frankie and I stood on the goal line waiting to receive the ball. Frankie caught it, handed it off to me, and I started up the field. Curly. Ten yards, twenty yards. I stiff arm one player. Curly. Sidestep two others and continued past the midfield strike. Three tacklers converged on me, but I bowled them over. Curly. Continued down the field. I got down to the 30, to the 20, the 10. Four tacklers jumped on me, but I carried them over the goal line to score the winning touchdown. Curly. What do you want? You'll have to come back. I forgot to hand you the ball. <laughs> If you forgot to give me the ball, what was I carrying under my arm? Your other head. <laughs> what kind of story is that to tell him? You kids better run along. Your father ain't in very good form today. Okay, I've heard enough anyway. Me too. Come on, Phyllis. Let's go down to the corner and have a beer. Yeah, you kids... What? <laughs> You're going down to the corner for a what? A root beer. See you later, Daddy. Ooh. Had me scared for a minute. <laughs> Hey, did you get the tickets for the game, Curly? Yeah, we're supposed to pick them up at the box office. Hey, we were lucky to get these two seats. Phil, what were you two fellas telling the girls about your having played football? I wish you wouldn't fib to them. What fib? We did play football, didn't we, Frankie? Of course we did. I'll never forget the time I starred in the Rose Bowl at Pasadena. It was on New Year's Day, and I zigzagged all over the field avoiding tacklers. Isn't that right, Curly? Yeah, with a few corrections. The zigzag you were doing. <laughs> but it wasn't New Year's Day, it was New Year's Eve. <laughs> It wasn't the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. It was a hotel lobby in Milwaukee. <laughs> the only guy trying to tackle you was the house detective. <laughs> hey, Alice, he wasn't the star of that game. I was. Which game? The one in Pasadena or the one in Milwaukee? The one in Pasadena. Oh, <laughs> uh, that was that day I made them 12 touchdowns. They couldn't lay a hand on me in small wonder. Uh, <laughs> In those days, I had the speed and grace of a gazelle. 
Gazelle, you say? <laughs> now, look, Curly, let's forget this small talk and let's have lunch before we go. Alice, I'll have a ham and cheese sandwich on white toast. And I don't want no tomato on the sandwich. Instead of tomato, I want sliced pickle in the sandwich. <laughs> and I want the toast light and warm. Anything to drink, Your Highness? Uh, yeah, I'd like some coffee. No cream, two and a half lumps of sugar. Would you like it served in bed? No, on a saucer, like I always have. Never. <laughs> Look, we'll fix our own lunch, and we better do it now if we want to get to that game in time. Oh, Phil, I meant to tell you, you won't have to go to the game. Won't have to? What do you mean? I have a surprise for you. You can see the game at home. I bought you a television set. Alice! <laughs> I told you never to mention that word in my house. <laughs> I am a radio man, and we of radio refuse to acknowledge this Johnny come lately. <laughs> Bill, television is a wonderful form of entertainment, and it's here to stay. Bah, humbug, and balderdash. <laughs> And if you needed a dash of poppycock, too. <laughs> Gee whiz, entertainment, she says. It's nothing but stereoptic and slides with the shakes. <laughs> How would you know? You never gave television a fair trial. No, but I've given the shakes a test. <laughs> <laughs> when TV first came out, we had a set here for a full evening. And what did they show? Puppets, wrestling, old cowboy pictures. And beautiful dames with low cut gowns. Yeah, beautiful dames with low. <laughs> what kind of a set you got, Clyde? <laughs> you know, Phil, they have some wonderful shows on television today. Educational programs like Shakespearean dramas, child psychology, political forums. Ina Ray Hutton and Dagmar. <laughs> <laughs> They're educational. Depends on what you're studying. Bill, why are you so dead set against television? Well, I don't think it's ready yet. Ah, uh, let's face it, Curly. You're just sore because you can't get a job in the media. Nobody wants you on television. What does that prove? Nobody wants me on radio either, but I'm on it. <laughs> I think I could have picked a better way to prove my point. <laughs> hey, where's the set, honey? Well, I sent Willie out to buy one. He's such a shrewd shopper. I think you'll change your mind when you watch some of the programs, Phil. All right, all right, so I'll give it another chance. Hey, Remley. Yeah? Call the Coliseum and cancel our tickets. Okay. Honey, honey, I know you'll like television once you get used to it. There are some wonderful artists on television. Good comics, dramatic stars, and some of the female singers are beautiful. Beautiful? Are you kidding, honey? They won't see anything until they've seen you. Oh. That's when they're going to see it, because you're my idea of a... Beautiful singer. Oh, thank you, dear. I... Wait a minute. What are you leading up to? The same thing you're leading up to, your song. <laughs> thank you, dear. <laughs> well, I fight the feeling, the feeling, the fabulous feeling. Why I fight the feeling? We're face to face with romance. Why I miss the magic, the magic, the moment of magic? Why I miss the magic? Relax and give it a chance. We're right on the very brink of kiss number one. There's no time to stop and think. It's too late to run, the beginning has begun. So why fight the feeling, the feeling? That started us reeling Why fight the feeling That says tonight is the night Why fight the feeling When it's oh so right Why fight the feeling The feeling The fabulous feeling why fight the feeling? Relax and give it a chance. We're right on the very brink of kiss number one. 
there's no time to stop and think. It's too late to run, the beginning has begun, so why, why, why? It's the feeling, the feeling that started us reeling. Why, why, why? It's the feeling that said tonight is a night. Why fight the feeling when it's all so Curly, I canceled the tickets. You know, I've just been thinking it probably will be better to watch the game on television than to go out there. Oh, of course it will. I told Willie to buy a set with a large 21-inch screen. 21-inch? Uh-huh. Woo-hoo. Hey, that'll make it almost lifelike. You know, Remley, huh? that'll be great for watching them line plays. You see, when they well, start Here going... I am, everybody. I bought the set. Oh, Willie, you dove you. I can't wait to see it. Where is it, kid? Right here under my arm. Under your... <laughs> Under your arm? What kind of a set did you get? Alice told you to get a 21-inch screen. Oh, nonsense. The size of the screen is unimportant. This is the best second-hand portable set that money can buy. Oh, that was a present for Phil. Why did you have to buy a portable set and a second-hand one at that? I don't think you should keep sinking money in this husband of yours. <laughs> <laughs> like pounding sand into a rat hole. Besides, this has a good-sized screen. I'll open the cabinet door and show you. There. <laughs> How do you like it? Take it back. It's damaged. It is not. Then what's that small piece of adhesive tape right in the center for? <laughs> That's the screen. <laughs> oh, goody. <laughs> we get to see Faye Emerson in a plunging Band-Aid. <laughs> Willie, how can you be so cheap buying a set like that? Hey, Remley, take a look at that thing. Have you ever seen anything like that? Anything that small in your life? Not since you gave me my last paycheck. Oh. <laughs> Don't be sarcastic, fellows. You get a, a, a wonderful picture on this set. I'll just plug it in and show you. There. Now I'll just turn it on, adjust the picture. There we are. Oh, it's a beautiful picture. Uh, let me see it. You'll have to get in line, honey. All this thing can handle is one eye at a time. <laughs> Look at that nice large picture. You couldn't get a bit. A be oh, dear. There's something mechanically wrong. The picture blacked out. Oh, I'll fix it, Willie. There. Oh, the picture's back, Philip. How did you do it? It was easy. I just brushed the fly off the screen. <laughs> We can't watch a football game on this screen. We'll all go blind. Come on, Remley. We're going to the Coliseum and see that game. We can't, Curly. When I canceled the tickets, they said there were no more available. Oh. Well, we can't get tickets, and now we can't see it on television. We can still see it on television. How? All you have to do is go out and buy a 21-inch screen. Uh, they're very expensive. Now, if you know where to go, I can get one a lot cheaper. Now, where are you going to get one cheaper? I know a guy. Ow! <laughs> Follow me, Curly. All right, I'll be Well, here we are, Curly. Just wait till you see my friend's merchandise. This is one of the swankiest house furnishing stores in the city. Yeah, nice location, too. Right next door to the city dump. <laughs> it's ideal. Gives him a chance to pick up a lot of unusual items. Sounds like an enterprising fellow. Oh, he is. Where do you meet him? Hiya, Grogan. Well, Frankie, hiya, pal. <laughs> you too, Harris. Good to see you. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, bud, ain't you the guy who was in the counterfeiting business and wanted to sponsor me on the air? The same. I hated to give that business up, but I had to. The government complained. <laughs> Oh, I can't imagine why. <laughs> Jealousy. <laughs> I was turning out better stuff than they were. <laughs> I made a $5 bill that was a doll. <laughs> Your money was that good, huh? 
Well, I ain't one to brag, but once the banks handled my stuff, they refused to carry that inferior merchandise the Treasury was handing out. <laughs> it was only a question of time before the government went bankrupt, so being a good American, I stepped out. <laughs> that was a patriotic gesture. Yeah, yeah. Harry was very grateful. <laughs> Gave me a presidential citation and an autographed record of Margaret singing The Thing. <laughs> now, what can I do for you? I'd like to hear the record. <laughs> Hey, look, Grogan, I want to buy something, but uh, before I do, are you sure that this is a legitimate business? Well, naturally, this is a legitimate business. <laughs> if it wasn't, how could I display all this merchandise out in the open here? Everything you see here was bought on the level. There's pianos, refrigerators, lamps, end tables. There ain't a hot piece on this floor. <laughs> now, what do you want? Well, I want to see a television set. Follow me. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? Opening a trap door to the hot goods department. <laughs> Come on. Now, wait a minute. You might as well hold it because I ain't buying no stolen goods. Mr. Harris, I resent your straight-laced attitude. <laughs> I do business with all the big stars, and I got some wonderful sense. Well, I got to admit that you do have some beautiful merchandise. That's a nice-looking set over there. Well, it should be. It was custom-made for Bing Crosby. <laughs> How'd you get it? Well, me and a couple of friends, we were visiting Bing one night. I casually mentioned, that's a lovely set you got there. I'd like to have one like it. Bing said, if you want the set, take it. <laughs> Bing told you to take it just like that? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Two guys with me were so surprised they almost dropped their guns. <laughs> you stole that set from Bing? Oh, Everett's gonna hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Grog, I told you I don't want to buy no stolen goods. Well, all right, if you're gonna be picky -oon about it. <laughs> I got a set right here that belonged to Jack Benny. Now... Jackson bought a new one for me. Turn this one in, and I can let you have it at a very good price. I don't know. Don't look very modern to me. Well, it may not look modern, but just wait you see this thing wake. Just wait a minute, and I'll tune it in for you. Well, what are you reaching inside the set for? So I can get the cat's whisker in a good spot on the crystal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine. A crystal television set. <laughs> it's the latest thing. The picture's great, and just will you hear the reception on this? Here, put these earphones on. <laughs> you mean I gotta listen to this with earphones? Well, naturally. Now you put the earphones on while I turn the crank. <laughs> What's the crank for? You want the pictures to move, don't you? <laughs> You may think that I'm a hard man to please But I don't believe I want this set I don't blame you, Curly I've come to the conclusion that you shouldn't buy a set Then how are we going to see the game? We'll buy a kit and build our own set Build our own with a kit? Now that appeals to me Buying a kit is cheaper anyway Sure once we get the set built, it'll be just like being at the game. We'll see all the plays, and at halftime, we'll see the card stunts and hear the band playing and those college kids singing, and we'll... Holy smoke, Frank. Thanks for reminding me. Of what? I haven't sung yet. <laughs> What's that? Automatic pitch pipe. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
There's them that does and them that don't and them that says they will but won't. So if Satan tempts you, hold on tight, cause you can't do wrong doing right. There's them that shall and them that chant and them that wish they could but can't. But it's them that does that sees the light, cause you can't do wrong doing right. Look at that gal Delilah, she had them all in a spin. She clipped the mighty Samson, but she got caught when her house fell in. So you see, there's got to be just one road for you and me. Let old Satan know he lost the fight, cause you can't do wrong doing right. You gotta do right. Oh, make me know. Yes, you gotta do right. Well, preach it to me. If you wanna see the light. Ooh, hallelujah. Cause you can't do wrong when you're doing right. There's them that's good and them that's mean and them that's somewhere in between. But it looks to me from what I've seen that you can't do wrong doing right. There's them that's meek and them that's bold. Now don't ask me, but I've been told it's the meek that plays them hops of gold. But you can't do wrong doing right. Now look at old Big Goliath. Bragging about his side. Picking on little David. But he got his right between the eyes. So you see, there's got to be just one road for you and me. Let old Satan know he lost the fight. Cause you can't do wrong doing right. You mustn't do wrong. Oh, that's right with me. No, you mustn't do wrong. That's philosophy. If you want to get Along. Yeah, I believe it now. Cause you'll never get along if you're doing wrong. Now, they threw Daniel to the lions. The king had it done. He's the law. But it wasn't long till Daniel had all of them cats drinking milk out of straw. And so you see, there's got to be just one road for you and me. Let old Satan know he lost the fight. Cause you can't do wrong doing right. No, you can't do wrong doing right. Cause you can't do wrong when you're doing what is Keep right. Keep on doing right. you're going to try to build your own television set out of that kit? Sure, it'll be a cinch. There's only 2,784 parts to put together. <laughs> Certainly, and we have each part numbered and all laid out in the line, and then we got Willie and the kids helping us. But do you have to have the parts spread out all over like that? Well, they're not spread out all over. Now, come on, Remley, let's get started. Okay. Uh, according to the directions, the first part I need is number 97. 97! 97! Thank you. Now I need part 568. 568! 568! 568! It's up here in the attic, coming down! <laughs> uh, while you're up there, hand me part 2,522. 2,522! 2,522, it's out here on the roof. <laughs> I'll just reach out and... Oh, my goodness. Now what happened? Uncle Willie fell off the roof. Oh. Look, uh, baby Alice. <laughs> hey, honey, run outside and pick up part 2,522 and bring it in. What about Uncle Willie? Ain't nothing the directions about him. Let him lay. <laughs> Yeah, let's hurry and put this thing together. Game will be on in an hour. Let's see. Next thing I need is a uh, rotary condenser. That's part 256. Oh. 256! 256! 256! Philip, I've got a wrench sacroiliac. Sorry, we can't use it. <laughs> Looking for a rotary condenser. Thanks very much. It's fine. Look, there are too many people trying to help. You all beat it. Leave this to Curly and me. Look, Curly. It's too much trouble running all over the house to get the parts. Let's do it systematically. Let's start at the beginning of the line and put the parts together as we come to them. Yeah, that'll do it. Well, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> we did it, Curly, we did it Sure we did Alice thought we couldn't this silly girl <laughs> There ain't nothing we can't do nah. Just look at it yeah. That's what I call a television set Oh, ain't it a dandy Oh, man She's a little spread out But look at that cabinet we made yeah. Ain't that a thing of beauty? You see that slanted top? That gives it that streamlined effect Hey, I brought the groceries... 
Hey, fellas, what's the idea of bringing that little house inside? <laughs> Look, Julius. Why don't you leave it out in the back of the big house where it belongs? <laughs> Why don't you beat it, kid? I will, as soon as you verify a rumor that's been sweeping the country. What rumor? Is it true that Mr. Remley is the thing? <laughs> uh, no, no. No, he ain't. Now get lost while we try this television set that we just made. He's made a television set? Gee, there ain't nothing you guys can't do once the two of you put your mind to it. You mean our minds, plural. I mean your mind, singular. <laughs> you jokes ain't got enough brains to fill up two heads. Ah, uh, yeah? Now there's a nice snappy retort. <laughs> <laughs> Look, kid, I'll have you know we did a great job on this set We haven't tried it yet, but I'll guarantee it'll work This I gotta see Okay, this you're gonna see <laughs> Hey, Remley Huh? Crawl under the cabinet and turn the picture on You got the controls under the set? That's so the kids can't mess around with it Okay, the set's on, Curly, and it's working great how can you tell? You got the screen under the set, too? <laughs> of course not. Well, where have you got it? I'm anxious to see it. Look, if you'll just step in the kitchen, I'll show you the clearest picture you ever saw. <laughs> How's the sound, Curly? I don't know. I'll go in the dining room and listen. <laughs> you got the controls in the den, the picture in the kitchen, and the sound in the dining room? <laughs> Fellas, I don't like to be inquisitive, but what's in the bathroom? Alice. <laughs> Give me that line again, will you, boy? I don't like to be inquisitive. Don't fellas. go that far back. Oh, Just. <laughs> what's in the bathroom? Alice, she's taking a bath. <laughs> Gotta be fast on your feet, kid. <laughs> hey, Remley, there's something wrong. I just looked in the kitchen. There's no picture on. I can't understand it. I thought it... <laughs> no wonder. I forgot to put the plug in. Oh, no. There, now it's done. Oh, look at those tubes light up. Yeah, look at that machine glow. Yeah, and look at the smoke coming out of it. <laughs> no, that's just one of them cigarette commercials. Oh, yeah, listen to your set. <laughs> Get out of the bed, it's gonna blow up! Keep quiet, kid. I'm lucky I'm in one piece. Curly, you okay? Oh. Curly, oh. speak to me. Say something. Is there anything I can do for you, pal? Yeah. Hand me part 822. <laughs> What's that? My nose. It must be around here someplace. <laughs> hey, folks. I really get a chance to be an actor on this week's Lux Radio Theater. Dan Daly is ill, so he called me to take over his part in You're My Everything, and I'll get to a moat with my favorite star, beautiful Ann Baxter. Now, remember, I'm on the Lux Radio Theater this week, so don't forget to listen. Now, Hedda Hopper, then Gloria Swanson and the Theater Guild on NBC.